You've been for a while now, you, you know you are marriageable. You've been praying, you've been believing God. You've gone through counselors. You've spoken to counselors, they've told you what you should do. I mean, you, you probably even have a good job. You're probably living in Lagos, you're living in Abuja. You're saying, I don't need money. All I need is a man. I don't need, and these desires are right, they are okay. Everybody gets to that point in their life where they are just tired of being alone. They're just tired, they're saying, where is my helpmate? Where is that help suitable for me? When is he going to come on the scene? I've come to tell you, there are certain things you must do. I mean, I'm talking about positioning yourself. There is a, there is a, art, there is, there is a positioning that is necessary and that is important if you are going to be findable, if, you, if they are going to find you easily. Question in the heart of many people, especially when we come to ladies, is when will I marry? Who is this guy? How is he? What kind of person is he? Why can he not just find me? Why can't he just locate me? Scripture says that he who finds a wife has found a good thing. Therefore, according to the tenets of the scriptures, uh, you are the one who is doing the finding. That's the man, man. The woman is the one who is supposed to be found. Today, I'm speaking specifically to women. How is it that you have not been found? Why is it that you are not being found? Why is it like some people say in our times today, shoot your shot, shoot your shot, shoot your shot. <laughs> I've seen a video recently, a lady was shooting her shot. I mean, it was super embarrassing, super embarrassing. As a man I'm giving you as a lady, don't shoot your shot. What did I say? Don't shoot your shot. If a guy loves you, he's going to talk to you. If a guy loves you enough, He's going to speak. I don't care how he is. I don't care who he is. If he loves you enough, if he feels so much connection to you, he's going to shoot his shot. He's going to talk to you directly. Don't embarrass yourself by saying, you know, time is going. He's beating me for three years. dating me for four years. No, it's not the length of years. It's how persuaded he is that you are the one. But that's not the matter today. Today, I want to speak specifically about how can I be found? How can you position yourself? To find a life partner. Number one, and you see these are these are these are things that are jamming in the heart of people. You've been for a while now, you you know you are marriageable. You've been praying, you've been believing God, you've gone through counselors, you've spoken to counselors, they've told you what you should do. I mean, you you probably even have a good job. You're probably living in Lagos, you live in Abuja. You're saying, I don't need money, all I need is a man. I don't need, and these desires are right, they are okay. Everybody gets to that point in their life where they are just tired of being alone. They're just tired, they are saying, Where is my helpmate? Where is that help suitable for me? When is he going to come on the scene? I've come to tell you that it is in God's plan and it's in God's mind that you find someone suitable for you. Or permit me to say that someone suitable for you find you a very woman. It's someone suitable for you locate you. But there are certain things you must do. I mean, I'm talking about positioning yourself. There is a there is a art there is there is a positioning that is necessary and that is important if you are going to be findable. If you, if they are going to find you easily. And the very first thing you must do, number one, is that you must align your expectation to God's standard. Sometimes the problem is not that the man is not here. The problem is that your expectation does not align with God's expectation for your life. Many Christian sisters, many Christian ladies do not want God, what God wants for them. They want a man who is already doing stuff. But allow me to say to you that many times, God's men don't have a clue. That will shock you. Many times, God's men don't have a clue. They don't know what's going on. Imagine seeing Abraham. Abraham, where are you going? I don't know where God said I should go. Joseph, he said a dream to you on the street. And then he began to tell you how big the dream is. And after that, you find him in prison. Many men, many God's men have dream, have vision, but they are not looking like how it is. They are not looking like what it is. They are not looking like it yet. You cannot limit them because they are not looking like it yet. You are not, you shouldn't do that. Think through the Bible and you see that this is true. God men don't always have a direction or have all the details. Therefore, your expectation should always align with God's expectation. Is he a child of God? Does he have a dream? Is he ready to sacrifice for his desires? Is he a follower of God? Is he pursuing God? Is he pursuing a mandate for his life? Yes, he might be faced with challenges, but you need to follow hard after 
God's expectation. And that's number one. So having a rough time does not mean he's not the one for you. Ask yourself, am I persuaded with a vision? Am I persuaded with a dream? I mean, many things I hear these days, are, are, they, they say about ladies and they say, you know what? Ladies today are not ready. They're not ready to sacrifice for you. They're not ready to do that. We are not supposed to be like that. We are supposed to wait because many times God's men are in the rough times. It doesn't mean it will always look like that. Number two, do all you can to practice hearing from God. You see, practice hearing from God is positioning yourself. I say to people, it is amazing how many ladies want to hear God clearly for the first time in the matter of marriage. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's am almost embarrassing. You know, I'm having a conversation with ladies and I'm asking them, as they said, okay, this brother just asked me out and I'm saying, what are you doing? See, I'm praying. I said, oh, God, God speaks swiftly. God speaks expressly. That's what the scripture says in Timothy. So God's going to speak to you. Don't worry. And then I ask them, when was the last time you had God? Or look back into your life. Can you tell me one particular moment where you are sure it was God speaking to you? Many times uh, they stammer. Many times they stumble. They can't tell me what exactly it is that their persuasion of God speaking to them is based on. Therefore, they can't hear God. If you cannot hear God, it will be difficult for you to make a choice. I know many people also say, you know what, I, I, I didn't have peace. Uh, oh, you see, there's something they call like a peace meter. Listen to this. The scripture made it very clear to us uh, that the peace of God will guide our heart and our mind. Uh, that's what the Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Understand that the peace of God guides our heart and our mind. Uh, it's a serenity that God gives to his servant and to his beloved. But we are not supposed to be led by peace. Can I say that to you, sister? You are not supposed to be led by peace. Sir, you are supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Yes, the serenity of God is good for your heart, for your soul. That's the promise of God. But listen, when it comes to divine guidance, you and I should be guided by the Holy Spirit. Sir. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, the Bible says it to us and it said it very clearly that as many as are children, as many as are led of the Spirit, they are sons of God. We are to be led of the Spirit. We are to be moved by the Spirit. We are to be guided even of the Spirit of God. Bible says Jesus was led uh, into the wilderness by the Spirit. The question is what is leading you? What leads you to a relationship must be God. Holy Spirit speaking to you clearly, not peace. You need to learn how to hear from God. Stop depending on a peace meter. <laughs> Don't do that. Hear from God. Number three. Don't just look for the best man. Become the best lady. You know, many times people are just putting expectations that are unrealistic on the man. How about you? You see, when you raise up the standard of your life, you have also raised the kind of people that will come to you. I want to encourage you to do more. Invest in yourself. Treat yourself well. What are those bad habits you have? Begin to work on them now. That is how to position yourself. You can't live a fake life. I want a genuine man. All these fake accents, fake hair, fake lipstick, everything about you is fake. You didn't go to school, you said you went to, you are just lying on social media. I mean, just be genuine. It's very important. You are financially irresponsible. You are an impulsive spender. And yet you are looking for a guy who is financially responsible. No, likes attract. You need to begin to do better with yourself. You've not grown your faith. You've not grown your prayer life. And yet you are asking, I want, I want a prayer warrior. No, there are guys who are prayer warriors there. But they also want somebody who will support their prayer life. So they're not going to look at you because you have not developed yourself. It's very important, and I believe it is key, that we become the kind of person we also want to spend the rest of our life with. You are not only helping yourself today, you are also helping your future. So I will encourage you to position yourself by doing that. Christian brothers are looking for traits other than physical appearances they are looking for dependability they are looking for your work ethic uh, your time management your hard work your follow through one of the things we learn about Ruth in Ruth chapter 2 is that apart from her work ethic she, she also looked good for Boaz to desire her listen to this getting your hand dirty doesn't mean that you can also not look good one doesn't disturb the other please and then number four don't objectify yourself I see you dress up every time and then you look and say, Ah, look at shape. Look at me. Look at... What you're doing is that you're objectifying yourself. 
You can't even snap pictures on Instagram, on social media, on Facebook, even on your WhatsApp status without turning your back. I mean, what are they supposed to look at? Now, there's a difference between when a man is looking for a wife and a man is looking for a girlfriend. You understand that? When a man is looking for a girlfriend, anything goes. You understand that? Because at the end of the day, the, the gist is he just want to play with you and, have, and just play with your time. And if he's not born again, he's probably going to sleep with you. But if he's looking for a, a wife, he's looking for a level of maturity. He's looking for simplicity. He is looking for, compost, for, for, for you to comport yourself. He's looking at all of these traits. And these things are very important. You see, when you start saying men only want one thing from you, men only want one thing from you, it's because that is the thing you've always projected. You cannot objectify your back, your front, and then you say that's what they want from you. Of course, that's what they want from you because that's all they ever see from you. It's basic. You are not a sex object. Stop that madness. You are a Zion's lady. Behave like that. It's time to grow up. You see, that's how to position yourself. And then number five, don't be moved by his gold. Oh, I love, I love Proverbs 31. Bible was talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. Diligent, industrious. You may not have all these things in Proverbs 31, but at least uh, look at those things, desire them, and begin to walk towards them because it's important. It is all right to have them. Seek to dig your own gold. Don't go say yes to a man or when people say that you only respect guys that ask money. I mean, there are folks in church like that. There are folks in business like that. People know that when any guy comes in, they first of all, uh, they first of all look at that guy, they weigh the guy up, and then they ask themselves, is he rich? Does he look rich? Does he smell rich? And those are the people you respect. But when the person looks not so rich, you disrespect them. You don't honor them. Oh, that tells me that you are actually a gold digger. You might not tell yourself you are, but that's who you are. You don't have to get married to a millionaire. Make your own wealth. There's nothing in scriptures that says that a woman cannot make her own wealth. Oh, some people say, you know, if you have money, I've had this crap by a lot of people who says, you know, when a lady has money and then she's, she's living in a good house and then she goes and buy a car, nobody will marry her. <laughs> Those things just amaze me. Of course, some people will not marry you. Those who have poor mentality will not marry you. Guys who are not sure of themselves will not come to you. But those who are will come. And that's the kind of person you need. Some people have so much money, but they are keeping it. So that people will not know. Live the best life now. So that you attract that person that God has designed for your level of blessing for now. And that's important. Be unapologetic about the blessings of God upon your life. Live exactly how God wants you to live. And that's very important. Seek to become God's wealth agent. Make your own wealth. Seek to become God's agent. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Don't let anybody lie to you, lady, that you are not good enough to make your own wealth. Go get your own wealth. You are increasing the level. Men will come to you. God-appointed men will come to you. Those who are sure of themselves will come to you. You don't have to pity yourself because you have money. Or try and live in a poor way. Because, you see, money does not change us. Really. Money only fulfill and express who we are on the inside. Therefore, if having money does not change you to become proud, then you are a winner already. But some people, they don't even know who they are right now because money has not come. But thank God you know who you are right now. So be bold. Be bold. And then number six, learn to love other people's family. You know, the reason that guy is not talking, probably, is because the way you even talk about his family is terrible. He's afraid that you will not love his mother. You are not positioning yourself well. Life does not revolve around you and around your family alone you need to accept that when you get married to someone you are actually coming into their family and men are very sensitive they have battles they don't want to fight so they are looking at you and they are saying the way she even talks right now about my mother she's seeing my mother as a competition so that's a problem for them so you must learn to love their family learn to love other people learn to love ask him about his mom ask him about his parents ask him about his siblings don't just come with so much crazy rules and say, no, I can't do this, I can't do this. No, you can't do that. You, this is how to position yourself. This is how to make it easier. Some, some guys, some lady is saying, you know what, I've been, he's been dating me for five years. And he's not saying yes. He's not saying and he's not putting a ring on it because he's not convinced. There are things that he's still afraid of. It's not only money. These are character things. There are issues here. Another thing is learn to take care of yourself. Learn to take care of yourself. It comes to greet you in the house. Your house is everywhere. When we say everything is everywhere, 
the remote is on the rug, a uh, plate of two, two plate of two weeks ago is in the sink. It's not because you cannot wash it, it's because you don't have time to wash it according to you. But no, those are just fruit of dirtiness. You're dirty. Hello, you're dirty. Let's call it spade and spade. You're dirty. <laughs> I mean, how can you have that armpit unshaved? And then you are using perfume. After five hours, we can't stay close to you. I mean, I know some people they say they are doing it natural. Your hair is not is not kept. Natural hair is not kept. We walk close to you, he hugs you, and your your hair is thinking. And then you are asking, he's not saying anything. He won't say anything. Because you, you have not grown. You have not matured. It's time for you to grow. As you wait, how to position yourself is to take care of yourself. Like there, there is, I, I won't find a doctrine against deodorant. Apart from one crazy person who was saying that using perfume will go to hell. I, I don't know. I, I think some people just give you time to craziness. I, I've seen some people you talking about that woman or something. But I mean, there is no doctrine against, against, against that. I mean, there are perfume used even in, in anointing the chief priest in scriptures. The high priests, I beg your pardon, the high priest in scriptures. There are perfumes put in it, uh, in getting the ingredients together. Esther, there was perfume. So I don't, see, I don't know where those doctrines are coming from, if not from certain level of intoxication in things that are not of the spirit. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I, I, don't, see, I don't see that as an issue. And yes, if you know you have mouth odor, please buy chewing gum. There are things we can just help ourselves with. He's talking to you, hello, I say hello, and the guy is moving back. <laughs> That's how we will be moving back. He will not, he will not propose, he will just be moving back. He will be moving back. Because these are things you can stop. How dare you sleep with your makeup? Ah, your eyes, your face cannot even, it can't breathe. The pores are blocked. And you say you have acne. Acne is not an inheritance, it's because you are dirty. You didn't claim that face. You see, these are things we need to tell ourselves. Listen, there is no doctrine again. Holiness does not mean that you do not know how to combine your clothes. We, I mean, you can even go on Google and just place uh, pictures and say, what color go on blue? Instead of you combining blue with purple and then use a yellow scarf. Why? Nobody will do that. You, you should just take care of yourself. High on yourself, look a proper, look prim and proper, look like a woman, don't look like a girl. Nobody marries a girl, they date girls, they marry ladies. So, mature. Another thing, pay attention to the inside and the outside. You see, when a man wants to get married, I'm telling you how to position yourself so that you, you won't be there for long. How do you position yourself when a man wants to get married? <laughs> they, they stop looking at certain things. They stop looking at shapes because they understand that beauty is splitting. Such as, such as scripture says, it's splitting. I, I was telling him last week, I mean, the episode last week about the, the most beautiful lady <laughs> on our campus. Then I saw her recently and I was asking, what happened to you? <laughs> what happened to her was that she got pregnant and she delivered her. She changed. Praise God. I'm not body shaming her. I'm just trying to say if you had married her, because of her beauty, then you will be in problem by now. Because that slim girl has become very big. Praise God. But, but she's still beautiful. What am I trying to say? Dear lady, life is not about shapes, looks, allure, and gorgeousness. It is about the meek spirit on the inside. It's about your within, your quietness, your humility, the character. How do you respond to things? How do you respond to situations? That's all that matters. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4 says, Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Allow me to say to you that it's not only in God's sight, even in the sight of man. You are the image of Christ, and you must stop at nothing until you conform yourself to that image. I'm not talking about praying in tongues. I'm asking you to have the fruit of the Spirit. Let it be in you. Gentleness, joy. Don't let them see you and think that you are the anger, anger, anger king of a town. Ah, don't touch her. She's touch and go. Don't touch her. Don't do that. Be very calm. Let kindness ooze out of you. Be gentle. Find a way to respond to situation. Don't be heartless. And then, why can't they find? Don't rate your feelings higher than God's voice. Don't rate your feelings higher than God's voice. <laughs> see, I don't like him. Don't like it. <laughs> it's not at all that an answer. I, we, I was talking to somebody. He said, hey, I cannot, I can't say. I mean, I was praying that somebody who look like my pastor. I said, you know that that's the spirit of adultery. <laughs> your pastor is married. Are you in love with your pastor? <laughs> he, he doesn't have to look like your pastor. He just have to be the right man for you. 
And that's important. Listen, all this Ali Queen, H and M and B, all these things that we read, gives us an image of how we should be when we are in love. But most of these things are wrong. Listen to God. I am not saying that you should marry somebody eventually who you don't have feelings from. But let me say this to you. Let the foundation of your relationship be God's word. Because when the trials and afflictions of life come, it is that word that will keep you. It is not that beauty, it is not that handsomeness. It is, it is that word that will keep you. You will take that word and return to God. And say, God, you told me to marry this guy. And that, and what was going on here? Therefore, let that foundation be even on God's word. Another thing, you need to seek to have a good testimony and a good name with people. That's how to position yourself. Have a good testimony. I mean, let me say this to you. When a man wants to get married, they do a little bit of research. They will ask around. <laughs> How about that girl? How about... They will talk. But when your testimony is that, oh, <laughs> she, she's fire. They say, ah, she prays in tongues. No, anger, anger. That's anger personified. Now, the guy would, even though he may be convinced, something in him will say, maybe I should wait. I hear God again. Why? Because nobody wants to marry trouble. Nobody wants to get into trouble. Listen to this. That's a secret. That's a secret. And it's important we understand that. Finally, from now, begin to learn submission. Begin to learn to be led. Begin to learn submission. Submission to your father. Submission to authority over you. Submission to your pastor. Submission to your boss. Submission to the Holy Spirit leading you. Some ladies, you can't tell them what to do. That's not good. That's not okay. Submission does not mean that he's going to rule over you and you are a like slave. It is the way God has made the marriage to work. There is a role. The role is different. In every car, as every car has a wheel, has a brake, and has a throttle. Listen to this. If there were two, two, there would be accident on our road. Because the moment you want to accelerate, the guy beside you will press the brake. And the guy who's supposed to go for it will also stand. And there will be trouble. Therefore, God has also wired it. And God has made it in such a way that you and I should also have role fulfillment in, in our homes. Listen to this. This is how to position yourself. The problem is not that you are beauty, not beautiful. The problem is not that you have so much money. The problem is not poverty. The problem is that you are not properly positioned to be fine, to be found. You are, you are, you are not doing like you are even interested. You are, you are, you are not, you are not. They don't see you and you are radiant. They don't see you and you are happy. They don't see you and they have fun. They don't see you and they see joy in you. This is not okay. Our conversations must always lead to life. This is the plan of God. This is the mind of God, and this is what you should do if you will position yourself. Don't miss next week for anything. Now, if you have questions, you have submissions, you have additions, you disagree, or you just want to generally pass a comment, all right, don't, don't forget, you can send an email to pfaspeaks at gmail.com, or you can just write your comment on this YouTube channel right now. I'll be saying it, I'll be reading it, and then I'll be responding as need be. Understand that? I'll see you again next week. Thank you so much. Share this link with somebody. Let the truth of God's word, let it go everywhere. Deliver friends and sisters and brothers, even from ignorance. Because in this year 2022, we're all destined to reign and we're moving forward. We're reigning and God's favor is upon our lives. I want you to understand that. It's time to be equipped in, with knowledge. It's time to walk, not ignorant, but as the king that you are, that you may reign on the earth. I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I'll see you again next week. Cheers. <laughs>